I'm Jim Stout for ADSR Sounds, and this is my studio tour. This is what I call my little acid techno jam station. This is where I kind of sit and come up with, you know, some fun ideas. And this consists of the Roland TR-8. Uh, this one's been updated to have the 707, 727, and 606 sounds in it. Um, it's actually my favorite drum machine right now. I just love it because it's simple. It's got all my favorite drum sounds in them. And I actually like it a little bit more than the 707 and 727s just for the reason uh, of being able to tune the samples. So um, there's nothing better than um, a 707 snare drum pitched down for proper synth wave. It just, it's perfect. Uh, on top of that is the classic Roland SH-101. Now I've had a few of these, um, and I finally got a red one because apparently the red ones sound better. <laughs> We'll wait for that one, right? Um, and then below that, we have the classic Roland TB-303, the acid machine. Um, right next to that is the newer version, which is a TB-03. Um, I actually use this sequencer to drive the SH-101. So I've got it CV'd out into here, and I can make you know, fun, fast little patterns on this and drive the SH-101, uh, super handy. Next to that is another one of my all-time favorites is the MC-202. Um, this is very similar to this in the um, synthesizer section, minus the noise, but it's got a really cool sequencer in it. And the sequencer is really hard to, well, for some people consider it really hard to work with. I consider it the ultimate happy accident machine. Uh, you can program stuff in here, do some weird uh, portamentos and different note times and get some really, really interesting sequences out of it. And below that, I'm sorry, on top of that is actually uh, one of my favorite drum machines, one of my first drum machines, the Roland TR-505. Now this is kind of a hybrid between a 707, 727, uh, and it's actually more or less the little brother to to the TR-626, um, but it's got great percussion sounds in it. It's a lot of fun just to add on top of everything that this is doing. And all of this right here is being driven by the Roland SBX-1 sync box. So all the CV, I mean, um, actually all the um, DIN sync to drive the MC-202 and the TB-303 are coming from this, and the MIDI clock is coming from here to drive this, this, and this. Now, I've also got it synced, I can also synchronize it with the computer, and so it can act independently, but when I need to synchronize everything, I can just lock it to the computer and it drives up. So, I can just sit here and come up with all kinds of fun stuff. You can see that. So you can sit here and just kind of jam for hours and come up with, you know, really interesting patterns. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so now we're going to move over to my effects section. Um, and I've got a very eclectic set of effects processors over here. And these are just basically my favorite ones that are out for very specific reasons. Um, on top, we've got the Eventide H3000. This is a legendary box. It's got some of the best effects um, ever on here. Uh, the, the phasers and a lot of the kind of majestic sounds, the Eventide just makes incredible soundscapes. Uh, below that is the Insonic DP4. I have a true love for the DP4 as well. Um, I actually, when the DP4 first came out, I didn't really think that much of it. I've always been an Insonic guy, but I never really um, thought that much of it. I just thought it was like an effects processor. But uh, later on, I actually went to a place called Insonic School where I became a certified Insonic specialist, and they taught me everything about the DP4, and it changed the way I thought about it. Um, it is a brilliant, brilliant effects processor, and it's got some of the most classic sounds in there. Uh, Daft Punk used it extensively on their homework album, uh, so the phasers and stuff that you hear on all the drums, that's this. Um, and plus the reverbs, uh, the delays, it's just such a great sounding box. So below that is the old school eMagic AMT8. This is the 8x8 interface, uh, came out in the late, eight, uh, late 90s. Um, still have it, 
works great. Um, I actually have a couple of these. Uh, below that is the legendary MIDI Verb 2. Uh, I absolutely love this box as well. This came out in the late 80s and it was probably the first affordable 16-bit reverb. And there's still a lot of artists today that use it. It was also um, used a lot on the early warp and early techno stuff. It's got two of the most famous presets in here, what's called the bloom effects. And these are just kind of sounds that just, uh, it hits it and the reverb just kind of washes up and blooms over. It's an amazing atmospheric effect. Uh, below that is my first effects processor, the Elisa's Quadroverb. Love this as well. I actually run these in tandem, but these have a lot of classic sounds in here as well. Uh, the early Prodigy albums and stuff use the Quadroverbs extensively, and pretty much all early techno stuff uh, used these two effects processors, um, mainly just because they were affordable and they sounded good, but that's why I have like these kind of, I guess you consider lo-fi effects processors. I've got all the hi-fi stuff in the computer, all the even, uh, all the lexicon stuff and um, sound toys and everything like that. But for the authentic, real, true kind of techno sounds, these are the boxes. Below that is the Alesis 3630 compressor. Again, a very famous uh, old-school techno compressor. It was used by everybody from Josh Wink. Um, Daft Punk made it real famous to kind of get that real heavy pumping sound. That's this. I don't really think of it as so much of a utility compressor as much as I do an effects compressor because when you smash it with this it just gets dirty and tight. Uh, below that is another early famous one. This is the original Behringer composer compressor. Uh, Behring uh, this was actually when they were still kind of expensive. Uh, they were still affordable but this was about I think $500, five dollars $600 or so, and it's actually got all DBX chips inside of it. So if you can ever find an original Composer uh, MDX2000, pick one up. They sound great. Um, so I've got two like effects style compressors. They sound a little bit different, but they're both highly useful. So uh, that's pretty much it about my effect, uh, effects rack. So they're all kind of eclectic, but they are all very unique sounding. Now over here, I'm since I'm still pretty much an old school techno guy, uh, I've always liked using mixers. And um, I've gone mixerless for a while and it's, it, it, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. But for me personally, I really, enjoy, it really do enjoy having a mixer uh, because it allows me to kind of just add effects, set some levels, and just kind of start sculpting sound all in real time. And the mixer I use is the Mackie 1640i. Now, the reason I use this is because it's the only thing that I found that actually can kind of integrate directly with the DAW the way I want. I can take software instruments and then just send them to any of the channels inside this mixer um, without having to repatch or anything. All I have to do is select the Firewire input, select the output of this, tell it to go to six, 15 and 16, and I can run the software instrument and treat it like it's actual hardware instrument. Then I can go through and add different effects. to do is press this firewire button right here and basically I can print that sound with all the effects to a new track. It's super easy and I just love being able to kind of give software instruments more of a, a hardware sound just by running it through a converter through some other effects and then feeding it back into the machine rather than just bouncing it internally. I do do that a lot but sometimes if I want to add a little extra what I call lines in the mix to give it a little separation or a little bit more character it's very subtle but it definitely makes a huge difference in the final mix. All right, so for my master controller keyboard, I'm actually using the Roland System 8. Um, I love this synth mainly just because you can have several different types of synthesizers in here. You've got the System 8, you've got the Juna, I mean, uh, the Jupiter 8. I've also got the Juno 106. And I've also got the Pro Mars. So I have four different synthesizers in this one synth. The other great thing is all of these knobs and sliders 
uh, transmit CC, so I can use it to control any software instrument that I want. Uh, it feels great, it's got a lot of controls, super simple, plus it's MIDI interface, so I don't have to waste the port on the AMT8. Everything's done through USB, and plus it's just a great sounding, highly flexible synthesizer. So for software, my main DAW is Logic. Uh, I've been on Logic since, I would say, I believe 1992, so I've been on it a long time. Now for mixing, I have started using Harrison Mixbus. And this is the latest version of Harrison Mixbus. It's Mixbus 4. And I've tried so many different other things of summing and getting super high-end converters and high-end summing boxes and everything like that. But I found that this was a much more affordable and I seem to get, you know, I would dare to say better results out of this. And it's basically a complete digital emulation of the Harrison 32C console, uh, original analog console. So uh, mixes just come out sounding great in here. So I, I hope to have a video soon comparing uh, Harrison uh, Mixbus to Logic using similar plugins. And you can listen to the different kind of summing engines, but um, it's just, it's been yielding great results. So this is actually my favorite hardware sampler. This is the Emulator 3 XS. Uh, it is the first all digital emulator. Um, it, it replaced the original E3 which had analog filters, but this one's got digital filters in it and it has a certain kind of hi-fi sound to it. And I would say it's, a, it's, it's got a very kind of crispness to it. And um, I, what I do is I bust things from the mixer, sample them in here, and then put them back into the computer, and it just kind of gives things a little bit more beefy sound. Um, and plus, I'm loaded it with all the original classic Emulator 2 sounds, Emulator 1 sounds, the entire Emacs library, so it's also just a, a playback engine for all of those classic sounds as well. So over here, I've got another workstation that I use, and I use this mainly for sampling. And on this, I actually use the original Redmatica Keymap Pro. Now, I, I know that Apple bought Redmatica, and they put their um, auto sampler in main stage, I believe it is, uh, but still doesn't give me all the flexibility that the original Redmatica did because I can export to contact instruments in this and I can also convert back to EXS24 if I want to. Um, but this has all the same software on it, everything else. I've also got a Mackie 820i audio interface in here and this is going to be driving a lot of the other effects and, and, and routing in here, just keep thing, keeps things really simple. So, um, just a little key controller load it up and it does a lot of offline processing for me so it's just always nice to have a second workstation available to you. And finally um, I've got my Rack of Doom <laughs> over here. Uh, this is the Kawaii K1, uh, Classic TX81Z, a fully loaded JV1080, a fully loaded JV2080, so these have all the SRJV80 cards in here. Um, the legendary O1W rack mount uh, synthesizer. These not a lot of these around, um, and an original Insonic EPS 16 Plus. This was Insonic's first 16-bit sampler, and it was the first sampler to ever have built-in effects into it, so it had chorus, delay, things like that. Um, great sounding unit, and it's got also some uh, very legendary sounds in here. And then down here is just a line mixer where all of these run into and I just control the knobs and then the output of this goes in here and if anything I want to print, it's all there. And again, another uh, old school Emagic Uniter 8 audio, uh, MIDI interface. So this one actually does Simpty as well. So if I ever need to lock the tape for picture for anything else, which you really don't do anymore, but it's fun to have just in case. Uh, but this is my rack. And then I've also got some other microphones, some more cameras, things like that, that we do a lot of other field recording and, and things like that with. But uh, we do a lot of sound design here and, and create a lot of uh, fun instruments. So we can just kind of go through mix and match and add new sounds, program new sounds. And the big trick is that we, we program the sounds on here and then we layer them. Um, and then we put them all in here, we just kind of combine them in here and 
sample him in here, and then the uh, Red Matica does all of the sampling for us. And we go through and fine tune it, do all the velocity cross switches, all the velocity fades, uh, dial in the envelopes, make them real playable, things like that. But um, this is where we do a lot of the other stuff. Now, on top of that, I've got a whole arsenal of other synthesizers that I just can't fit in this room, and I'll give you a rundown of those as well. Oh. 